Hello, this is James Helm of Helm Enterprises Forging Division. Some of y'all may remember about a year ago, I had a video that I posted about a zombie cleaver that I did some coconut chopping tests with. Science! Well, I'm in the process of getting ready for the blade show in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have upped the game this time. So the zombie cleaver, we have the two-handed zombie carcass splitter. The blade is 17 and a half inches long. Handle is 20 and a quarter. It's forged from quarter inch by two inch uh, 5160 steel. The sheath is leather lined rawhead built by Tobin Nieto of Stonehaven Knife Works. He was usually my cameraman, but not today. The shoulder sling is a chain that came off of a door from an old slaughterhouse that got torn down years ago. My landlord's dad was some higher up on, in the slaughterhouse, told me he had 600 men working underneath him and he supervised when the slaughterhouse was torn down. Well, this came off of one of the doors. So I got permission, used it as a shoulder sling. I forged the hooks out of some high carbon harrow teeth. So. Like I said, the sheath is rawhide. The vibe that we were going for was a weapon that would be carried by the villain of a slasher movie or a boss character on a zombie video game. So I think Tobin perfectly captured that vibe. I added the blood splatters on it. I no longer have a shop cat. Now show the cat. She's hunting a grasshopper. Actually, that's um, brick red India ink that I splattered on there. Looks pretty authentic though, doesn't it? No worries, the shop cat is safe and well. Chasing grasshoppers. The other um, zombie cleaver that I made, and the ones that I've made since then, had a one inch hole drilled in it. Cleavers always have a hole up here so you can hang it on a nail and since the zombie cleaver has to be extreme I drilled one inch hole instead of a more normal size well this has to be even more extreme than the zombie cleaver so I drilled a one inch hole a three-quarter inch hole and a half inch hole all evenly spaced and with the, the centers all in the same line uh, the handle has a leather slab running underneath on either side. This is belt leather. The edges of the leather have been beveled. It's then been wrapped in paracord. It has a three strand par um, paracord Turks head knot. And then it's all been impregnated with epoxy. So it's not going anywhere. It's solid and permanent. My time. I will realize that the most frightening thing about this may not be the horror theme to it, but instead the leprous white flesh of my bare leg. But we're going to test the sharpness on my rather here suits lower leg. Mind you, this is a 17 inch blade, 20 and a half, or 17 and a half inch blade, 20 and a half, 20 and a quarter inch handle. And it's sharp. <laughs> Most two-handed carcass splitters. This particular piece here is inspired by the two-handed carcass splitters that would be used in big slaughterhouses back in the day before they would have electric powered bandsaws. They'd get a huge basically oversized meat cleaver with a two-handed grip on it. 
and that's how they would break the carcasses down into more manageable pieces. Those were extremely heavy. In fact, I've seen them listed about seven pounds or so. This is much lighter, and in spite of being a two-handed design, stays pretty lively, even holding at the extreme end of the handle. You can still swing it one-handed without too much danger. So historically the big carcass splitters were not hair shaving sharp like I just demonstrated. They were made with a more robust edge that wouldn't chip out when you were um, cutting through carcass and you hit heavy cattle bone. This though I'm intending more as a wood cutting implement. We're going to do some wood cutting demonstration here in just a minute, but at the moment let's go do some more standard zombie cutting tests. I'll just, in general, I'll put it in the video. Kit Kat! Here's my dear husband trying to cut off a finger. Finger! Ha! This will take a leg! Okay. One of the standard cutting tests is cutting through water bottles. So I've got five, rather than just little one liter or whatever water bottles, I've got five one gallon water jugs with a little bit of food coloring to make it more interesting. And my table here isn't wide enough to stick all five in a row. The blade's long enough if my aim is good that I'll hit all five at once. We'll see how good my aim is. Ready? Sure. I hit four at once. <laughs> Clean cuts. Alright. Alright, it's well established the coconuts, or as my friend in Germany, Jorg Sprave calls them coconuts. I are, got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Perfect analogs for zombie skulls. For the last one, we cut coconuts one at a time. This time, it's going to be a challenge to see if I can aim well enough. And we're going to see what I can do to five in a row. We'll see how my aim does. Oh, bounced off one. First one deflected it. Cut it cleanly, but it deflected it upwards. So let's set them up again. Cut it. Totally destroyed that coconut, so I put it on the far end. Let's try it again, see if it deflects. Position. And it deflected again. Uh, that's the original. Where did one go that I just hit? Well, the one I hit went flying off somewhere and we can't find it any anymore. This was the second one in line. You can see that it cracked the skull just from the impact of the one that I actually hit hitting it. So, since they're deflecting as I hit them, I'm going to try one at a time with it being a little better aimed. Here we go. Ah! I think I just sprayed my camera woman. <laughs> <laughs> Last one that's fully intact. Ah! And pieces flew a good 20 feet. So, I'm going to wipe down the blade and give it some uh, nice orange oil. You can see that the power of the strokes kind of destroyed my table here. That's a uh, one inch plywood and it cut through several of the layers. Gosh darn mosquito! Mosquitoes are trying to carry us away. So I'm going to wax or oil this blade down so it won't rust. Get me a towel. 
I call it good for today. I'll see y'all at Blade. One, two, three.